Hi, everyone. Good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you're at. Um, thank you for joining us today. This is our second in the series, uh, uh, our TeamRaiser um, overview series, How to Manage an Event in TeamRaiser. Um, there's actually, we have four calls scheduled. Um, the next one's going to be focused all on coaching emails, and I believe the one after that's going to be highlighting uh, reporting out of TeamRaiser uh, and general uh, other areas. So um, thank you for joining us today. Um, hopefully you can hear me. If you can't, then there's no reason for me to tell you that you need to uh, either turn up or on your, your computer audio or dial in. Um, but um, if you have any questions, um, along the way, definitely feel free to ask them as you think of them and we'll answer them as we go. I'll either answer them in chat or um, we'll uh, get to them at the end here. Um, definitely don't hesitate to, to shout with any questions. Everybody's gonna be on mute, of course, um, but we look forward to making this as interactive as possible um, and happy to answer any questions you have. I do also wanna point out that we do provide um, custom training and support. So if you aren't getting the answers you need or want to do something more custom specific to uh, a specific area of TeamRaiser or Illuminate or or any of the Blackboard uh, product suite, we're happy to assist with that. Um, once again, my name is Mark Becker. I'm the founding partner of Cathexis Partners, uh, and we've been a Black part, a Blackboard partner since we uh, opened up our doors uh, coming up on 12 years ago now. Um, we have a virtual team, so when everything hit, uh, we were in a, a pretty good setup already, luckily for us, that everybody was already working from their home offices, uh, but that allows us to support our clients um, affordably and cost-effectively. Uh, that's a little bit about us, but let me hand it off to Jeff, who's going to be going through uh, Team Razor Management with you today. All yours, Jeff. Thanks, Mark. Hi, everyone. My name is Jeff Farnier. I'm a developer with Cathexis Partners. I've been with the team since about the middle of 2012, and I've worked with over 200 different nonprofits in varying capacities. And so I'm looking forward to sharing my knowledge and experience with you today. And today we will be covering management of a team raiser event. So we'll be touching on managing our existing participants, teams, and companies how to add new participants, teams, and companies, entering offline gifts for our participants and teams, entering and managing our event gifts and or unconfirmed gifts or pledges. We'll talk briefly about the delayed self-pledges, managing those, as well as a brief overview of coaching emails, event managers, the team raiser library, and status tabs. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive in to working with our team raiser event so to start from the illuminate online admin homepage we want to navigate to fundraising and then team raiser from here uh, we want to locate the event that we're going to be working with and we want to click on the manage link under the action column this will bring us to the Participants tab, where we can search for existing participants as well as register new participants. So let's go ahead and let's start by talking about working with our existing participants. So to conduct my search, I'm going to start by entering the percent symbol into the first name field. The percent symbol is your wildcard handler in Luminate Online. So I'm going to enter the percent symbol into the first name field and click on Search. And this brings up a list of all registered participants. If you want to work with one of these registration records, you need to click on the name. If you click on the email address, it will attempt to email the user using your default email tool on your computer. So I click on the participant's name, and this brings me to the profile tab where I can see an overview of the participant's registration record. So not only does it give me an overview, but it also provides me with some links to quickly and easily manage and make edits to this constituent or this participant's uh, team raiser record. So first in the top right corner, next to the participant's name, we have an edit constituent info link. If I click on this, this will take me to the constituents 360 tab for this constituent or rather for the corresponding CONS 360 record for this participant. Next, we have you know, basic information about this registration record, including the team name and the affiliated company. 
if configured uh, as such in, within your event and if the user registered with them. So the first thing that we see that we can do is change their team membership. So we can see that this user is a captain. And so if we want to change this user's membership, we have the option of removing the participant from their team or making them the captain of a new team. And we'll talk more brief, more about uh, managing a participant's team uh, association in a few minutes. Next, we have the edit registration information link. This allows us to actually update the details that the user entered during registration. Or alternatively, if an admin registered this user, we can update this based on potential correspondence with the participant. So we can do things like update the information that they entered for any additional questions. We can change their company association as well as team information, fundraising goal, and the participation type. Once we are done making our changes, we click Save. It will save our changes and bring us back to the Profile tab. Next, on the right-hand side, we can see details about their status. Now, there's we're working with a captain, so we don't have the ability to modify their status, and this is something we'll talk again about uh, briefly uh, and uh, shortly, but you cannot modify the status of a team captain. So we'll get into more detail about that shortly. Next, we can see their fundraising goal, their total reported fundraised, and their total confirmed fundraised. Next, we have links to view and edit their personal, team, and company pages. And there's also this Make Public button. If I click on this, we, it makes the page public, and it now reads Make Private. Or the default that you'll see is make private. If I click on make private, what that does is it makes it so that the participant cannot be located using the team raiser search. Um, a, a common use case scenario for this is if your CEO or some other high profile individual affiliated with your organization has created a fundraising page, but they don't want to publicly promote it. They instead want to promote their fundraising page by their, their internal networks then you can make their page private, and that allows them to be the, the individual who provides the link, and only then users who have a direct link to their personal page will be able to locate it. So let's talk about making edits to their personal team and company pages. So first of all, it should be noted that if the user is not affiliated with a company or a team, we won't see any links next to the team page and company page. So let's go ahead and start with the personal page. If I click on edit, I can update Mr. Bruce Wayne's title, his body text. I can upload a new photo, and I can convert this uh, the, the page to leverage a video instead, assuming that I have the URL for a YouTube video. So let's say Mr. Wayne has called our office and said, for whatever reason, I'm unable to log into my participant center and update my personal page. I need these changes made. So you just locate their profile, edit their personal page, and then we can make the changes according to their, their, their requests. And then uh, before we wrap up this segment, down at the bottom of this page, and you'll see this also uh, on when we're editing the team and company pages, we can create a shortened URL that the user can use to promote their personal team or company pages via social media. So we can enter something like B. Wayne or Bruce Wayne or Bruce underscore Wayne or Wayne, whatever uh, the user desires, and click Save and Continue Editing. And now we can see at the bottom a URL that can be used to access the personal page instead of having the very long and potentially very ugly default Team Razor URL in order to access it. Now, do note that upon reaching the page, once the page loads, the URL will revert to the full version of the Luminate Team Razor personal page URL. But this is a great way to simplify promotion of a page via a platform like Twitter, where you have a limited character count. So once we have completed our changes, we're satisfied, and we're finished, we can click on Save to save our changes and jump back to the Profile tab. Next, we can edit their team page. So we can update their description, 
and upload a team photo. There is no option to convert a team page into uh, or to a page that leverages a video. Unfortunately, that option is only available for personal pages. So similar to the personal page, we had the ability to create a shortened URL for the team page so that a captain can promote their page on social media. Once we're finished with our changes, we can click Save to save our changes and back out to the Profile tab. We can click Save and continue editing to save our changes and remain on the page. We can click Reset to reset our changes. We can click Replace with Default Page, which will revert this page to the existing version of the default page content that we established during the Team Razor configuration. And then finally, we have the ability to preview our changes and cancel any uh, changes and return back to the previous page. And then we can also edit their company page. So let's go ahead and edit the company page. We can upload a banner image, a, modify the page title, add some body text, and if we scroll down, we can also upload uh, an image which is similar to the personal or team page photo, and we can also create that shortened URL that we discussed uh, previously with the other pages. So if you have a sponsor who is going to be very involved with your event and they want to promote their company fundraising page, you can create a shortened URL for them here, and they can then promote that either internally with their company or on social media. Next, we have the ability to edit check-in status. Most Team Razor events probably won't be leveraging this, but if yours is, let's go ahead and take a quick look at this. We can click on edit check-in status. We can change the step number, and we can also change the online progress to whatever is necessary. Once we're done with our changes, we can click finish to save our changes and return. So. Um, next, we can also enter a gift on behalf of this participant. And so down below where we have this gift history bar, any gifts that have already been entered on behalf of this user, whether they were made online or entered offline by an admin, you'll see those listed here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the workflow to enter an offline gift for this participant. We click on enter hey, offline Jeff. gift. Mm -hmm. Sorry to interrupt, but um, there was a question that came in, and I was about ready to answer it um, in the chat, but then I'm like second guessing myself. So before we get too far, I wanted to um, ask you. Um, uh, the question was, do you have to select photo or video globally for an event or campaign, or can a participant select one or have both? I think they can choose to have either or individually, um, but I wasn't sure. That is correct. It's an either or configuration, but, and, and this is this is the but, you can set a default layout within the Team Razor configuration and either as an admin or the user themselves by the participant center can choose to leverage a different layout. So let's say that you set a video layout as the default personal page configuration and you have some sort of uh, video that your organization produced for this event as the default um, video to be, to be displayed on the personal page. The participant can instead opt to use a photo, or conversely, if you configure photo to be the default presentation for a personal page, if the user has taken the time to produce their own video on YouTube, they can switch their page over. But you cannot have both a photo and a video on a personal page. Perfect, thank you. Well, um, so jumping back into our gift entry flow, when we are entering a gift, and we're gonna see this again a couple of times when we talk about entering offline gifts, whether it's for the event, the participant, or a team. We start out by designating a donor for our gift. So we can either search for an existing constituent profile, we can create a new donor record, or we can even associate this with an organization record. So if you want to create a new donor, we select the Create New Donor radio button, and we need to enter a first name and a last name. Those are the only fields that are requisite in order to create a new record. Now, that's not necessarily ideal, 
because we want to ensure, generally speaking, that our Constituents 360 records have an email address. So if you're, if you're conferring with a donor over the phone and you're creating a new record for them, do your best to obtain their email address. Some users will be remiss to, to you know, share that information, but if you can get that, the more complete a record you have, the better. But let's say, in, for instance, that our donor already exists in our system, and we know this, and so we select radio for a search for an existing donor. We simply need to enter some sort of search criteria, and we will be presented with a list of existing records that match our search criteria. Finally, if we want to locate an organization, we need to enter an organization name, click search, and then we'll be presented with a list of organizations that, that, that match our search criteria. So let's go ahead and search for an existing donor. And in this case, I happen to know the email address of the constituent who's making our gift. And in this case, Bruce Wayne is going to be making a donation on behalf of his own page. So Bruce Wayne has contacted us, said, my internet's down my laptop broke, whatever it may be, I need to enter a gift, but I'm unable to do so, can you assist me? So we locate Mr. Bruce Wayne's record, we locate his existing profile, and click on Select. And now we're brought to step two to configure our gift. So there's a, a, a few steps, it's very easy. We first determine whether it's a one-time gift or a recurring gift. We designate a gift amount. We determine whether or not the gift amount is displayed in honor rolls. So if the user is making a very large gift, like let's say a CEO or some other board member is making a substantial gift and they don't want that gift amount to be revealed so as to intimidate other donors or whatever it may be, we can check this box and the gift amount will be omitted from honor rolls. Similarly, they may not want their name to be displayed and recent donor honor rolls or if they're donating on behalf of a team or participant, whatever it may be, they may not want their name displayed. We can simply enter anonymous and that will prevent their name from being revealed. So we have two different options for restricting the visibility of the donor's gift and their name. So once we've established the anonymity, and or whether or not the gift amount is displayed, we must determine the payment method. So we have three different payment methods that we can select. The first is cash, and the second is check, and the third is credit card. So let's talk first about cash and check. So either the cash or check method does not result in a payment actually being processed through Illuminate Online and your merchant account. Instead, what it will do is indicate that X number of dollars have been donated on behalf of the event or the participant or the team, and you'll see that gift show up in your transaction or rather your gift, your team raiser gift reports. So there's an additional option for cash and check. There's this payment status, confirmed and unconfirmed. Confirmed means, as the description says here, you have the cash or check in hand. If we select unconfirmed, that means it's effectively a pledge. This user has said, I promise to donate X number of dollars, perhaps on event day, or I'll be mailing it in. Let's say perhaps Bruce Wayne is going to put a check in the mail today, but he wants the gift amount to credit his uh, progress meter today, rather than waiting until it comes in. You can select unconfirmed, and if you have your team raiser configured to count unconfirmed gifts, then you'll see that show up on his page. Now, check options have the same payment status confirmation or unconfirmed, but it also has an additional field. It has this check number field. So what you can do with the check number field is a number of things. First, and most obviously, is if it's a check, you can enter the check number so that you can actually match up this gift with a physical check number. Optionally, you can get a little creative and use this in a bit more of an abstract manner. Let's say perhaps you are doing drives at like a grocery store and you want to indicate that cash was received on a certain date 
at a certain place. So we could say, for instance, you know, check number 251, event day check, or we could say it was a pledged gift, or we could say it was cash in person received on 72220, and we could say grocery. And so you can include the check number field in your reports, and that allows you to get a little bit of additional information about a cash check that was received. So the check number field, it's fine to omit this. It's not going to make or break anything, but it's potentially something that you can leverage to have a little bit of additional information about the gift that you received that you can then leverage in your reports. Finally, we have the credit card payment method. When we select credit card, we need to enter the credit card number and the expiration date. That's all that's required of us. And finally, when we process, when we click process, it's going to instantly hit the credit card. This isn't going to be delayed. We can't set the gift to trigger on a certain future date. The the gift date is today and it's it's pretty instantaneous. Of course, the caveat to it being instantaneously shown is the sort of delays between the gift clearing and going from your merchant account, your payment processor over to the cardholder's bank. So let's go ahead and let's just enter this as a cash gift. And we're going to, for right now, we're going to say this is unconfirmed. Let's, and, and so what we can do is we can hit process and it will process the gift and return us to the profile tab or we can click process and add another. So let's go ahead and very quickly process and add another. So I'm going to locate Bruce Wayne's record. Bruce Wayne is being very generous and he's decided to make two gifts today. And we're going to process this as a confirmed gift. So now, once I click process, it returns me to Bruce Wayne's registration profile tab. And down under gift history, I can now see two gifts. I see offline confirmed and offline unconfirmed. I can also see details about the donor and their contact information, the gift date, the amount, and the payment type. Now, under the action column for the confirmed gift, I can view or edit this gift. If I click on view or edit, I can modify the gift amount, I can opt to not display the gift amount, and I can change the recognition name. I can also change the payment method. Now, do note that these options are not available for a credit card gift because obviously there's various reasons why we don't want an admin to be able to modify the details of a credit card gift, such as the gift amount. So, um, under the, or, or next to the unconfirmed gift, we have not just the ability to view or edit, but we have two additional links. We have confirm and reject. So these links are to determine whether or not we've actually received the gift. Once we receive the gift and have the gift in hand, we can click on confirm. Or if there's an unfortunate situation where Mr. Bruce Wayne contacts us and says, I cannot make good on my pledge, we can reject that gift. So working with a gift for a participant is quite easy to do. Entering new gifts for participants is also quite easy to do. Um, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit now about adding a new participant and registering them for the event. Let's click on the participants tab and click on register a participant. So to start, if you know that the constituent, the person who you're registering, already exists in the system, we can start by finding constituent. And if we don't have their information, we can manually enter their name in the fields below. But what I'm going to do is I happen to know that the constituent already exists in the system, and I'm going to enter uh, either their first and last name or their email address and click go. So here I'm presented with a list of users who match my search criteria. I'm going to select click on select under the action column, and then it will populate the details with the information that we already have on hand. So the more complete a record you have in Constituents 360 for this user, the more complete their team user registration profile will be. So once we've entered the biographical information, we need to move on and enter the details of their registration. So we can enter things like emergency contact information. We can enter the details for an honoree if, for instance, they're fundraising in honor of a specific individual. And then we have the ability to modify or associate the registration with a team and or a company. So first, we can choose to associate it with a company. So if you have your team raiser configured to allow it, you can select any companies that already exist in your system. And this will associate the participant's individual participation record with said company. 
Now, we can also assign them to be registered with an existing team. So we can enter a team name, or we can just click on Search by Team, and it will give us a list of teams that are associated with the event. And we simply click on Select under the Action column. And it will populate this, and it will pre-check this radio button to assign the company, uh, the participant to a currently registered team. Alternately, we can make this person the captain of a new team. We would simply check the radio button for make the participant the captain of a new team and enter their team name information. So in this case, we're just going to register the user with an existing team. One more note about, um, or, or two more notes about making them the captain of a new team. The team that you create can be associated with a company, and you can and should also establish a fundraising goal for the team when you're creating them. Next, we have the participation information. So we can designate the participation type, choose a discount that should be applied, if one should be applied, and then we want to enter their fundraising goal. Next, we have this option down below, make this participant the company coordinator for all teams and participants associated with the same company. Now, that's a bit of a mouthful, but company coordinators have the ability to modify a company page. So what that means is specifically, if Jeff Rainier is registered and associated with the Wayne Enterprises company and established as the company coordinator, when he logs into his participant center, he'll see a company tab that will allow him to update the company page from within his participant center. So that's what this checkbox is. Next, we have any additional information that we need to enter based on the questions that we have configured for the team raiser and have required. You, it's, you, you have the ability when you configure your team raiser to set questions to not have to be answered by admins. So any questions that aren't required to be populated by an admin can be skipped over. But in this case, we determined that t-shirt size must be populated by the admin when registering a user offline. Next, we have the registration fee information. So let's say, for instance, you need to knock off the registration fee payment. You don't want them to have to pay a registration fee, and you don't want to use a discount. You can select other registration fee payment and keep this set to zero. Um, so if you don't want to knock off the registration fee, you can just keep the default registration fee selected. Next, we also have the ability to enter an additional gift amount. So let's say uh, Mr. Rainier has said in the course of registration he'd also like to make an additional gift. You can enter that here. So if we enter 10, when I click out or hit tab or do anything to bring my cursor out of the additional gift field, we'll see the total for this registration transaction listed here. In this case, we're going to delete this and say he, he did not make such an offer. So now that we've established all the basic information, we also have an upsell option. So we can choose whether or not they should get a t-shirt, choose their t-shirt size, and choose the price that they're going to pay. So in this case, we're not going to opt them into an upsell, and they're not going to be paying anything to register. So once we're all set with the registration information, we click on Register Participant. Now it tells us that the participant was successfully registered. We can click on View Summary, and this will bring us to the Newly Registered Participants Profile tab. Now, when, when I first started talking about managing uh, a pre-registered participant, I mentioned that captains can't have anything done to their active status or to their status. We have now for Mr. Rainier, a make an active link. If I click on this, I'm going to get a pop-up that gives me a bit of a notice saying, if you click this, here's what's going to happen. The short version is if you deactivate a record, the user cannot log in, and the personal page becomes inaccessible to donors or anybody visiting the website. However, their personal page remains intact, and the gifts that they have fundraised will remain intact. So I can click on Confirm to deactivate the record, and now the status changes to a red inactive. Now that I've done that, I have a new link that I didn't have before, and that is Delete Registration Records. So you cannot delete an active registration. The only way you can delete a registration record is if you first deactivate it. So let's say the user first requests a refund, says, for whatever reason, I can't participate, and I can't even fundraise. I'd like a refund. In the event of that happening, you can deactivate and delete the registration record upon submitting the refund. 
So let's go ahead and make his fundraising page active again. When I click on Make Active, I get a pop-up that just gives me a bit of information telling me it's going to be active again. The user can log back in and users can find their page. So we've now discussed creating a participant, managing a participant, entering their gifts, and changing their team memberships. Now, let's go ahead and talk about working with our teams. We click on the Teams tab. And this will show us a list of all the teams who are registered for our event. So what we want to look at is under the action column, we have three options here. We have manage, disband team, and select new captain. So if I click on manage, this brings me to a page where I can see details about my team or the team that I've selected. So we see captain information, we can see the number of members, we can see what the team goal is, the number of confirmed gifts, and the total of confirmed gifts. We can also see a list of gifts that are attributed either to the team members of the team itself, and we'll see on, under the on behalf of column, it will tell us who this gift actually was attributed to. If we click on the Members tab, we'll see a list of all the team members who are associated with this team. And then finally, there is a largely unutilized Notes tab. This is not very useful, but if for whatever reason you want to keep notes about an individual team, we could select the Notes tab, click on Create Team Notes, enter a team note, and We'll just put something generic and click finish. And now we have a team note and you can also print the notes out. So I've never seen this utilized, so I can't give a, a use case scenario, but if you ever find a need to keep notes, internal notes about a team for whatever reason, uh, this is where you can locate those and leverage those. So let's go ahead back to the gifts tab and let's take a look under related actions. We have edit team de details, edit team page, and record team donation. Let's click on edit team details. When we edit the details, we can change the team name. We can establish their goal if, say, for instance, the captain forgot to establish a goal when registering and creating his team. And we can even associate this company with a we can associate this team with a different company. So once I've, once I've completed making my changes, we click Finish to save our changes, and it brings us back to the Team Overview tab. Next, we can click on Edit Team Page. So as we discussed previously, when you're editing the team page, you can update the description, add a photo, and create their short URL. Once we're done making our changes, we can click Save to save our changes, and it brings us back to our Overview page. Next, we have record team donation. So similar to entering an offline gift for a participant, we can search for an existing donor or create a new donor or attribute this gift to an organization. So in this case, we're going to say that we know who our donor is. We enter information and we're going to search for them and click select. Enter our gift amount and click process. And then we'll have a new gift listed. We can see under on behalf of, we can see team. That means this gift was credited directly to the Wayne Enterprises team rather than one of the individual team members. So that's how we can manage a team, update the team information, and enter a gift on behalf of the team. Let's talk a little bit about creating a team. When you go to the Teams tab, you'll see that there is no button to create a team. That's because you can't simply create a team. Teams must have a captain, and they must be attributed to an individual participant, therefore, which means to create a new team, you must start by locating a participant or registering a participant, managing the record, changing their team membership, and we can make the participant the captain of a new team. If I click on make the participant the captain of a new team, I can enter the team name, choose an affiliated company, and enter the fundraising goal and click save. Now in this case, I don't necessarily want to associate Mr. Rainier with a new team, but that is the process for creating a new team. So we've now talked about managing our team, entering gifts for our team, and how a new team gets created. Let's go ahead and move over to working with our companies. We click on the local companies tab, and this gives us an overview of the companies that have been created for our event. So let's start with working with an existing company. So under the action column, we have edit company, manage company, define sponsorship details, and delete company. So let's start by editing our company. So what we can do is when we click on this, we'll see that we have 
multi-step workflow similar to, to previous operations. We can update the pub public company name. We can enter a note. This is only for administrators as denoted by the fact that there is no icon of the three little people, which indicates that the information that we enter here is in some way uh, possibly visible to our site visitors. So we can enter a company fundraising goal. If, for instance, we know that this you, this company is going to be actively involved in fundraising, having teams associated, and therefore going to have a public-facing company page and have a progress meter or a thermometer. So um, if we scroll down to the bottom, under participation status, there's two options. There's prospect and confirmed. This determines whether or not the companies that we enter here will actually be accessible to our participants when they register or to our admins when registering a participant or forming a team. Confirmed means that this is available for team and or uh, individual selections. A prospect means they haven't yet committed and therefore it won't display in public facing selection lists. So once we're done configuring or updating our the basic uh, company information, we click next, and this brings us to the identify company coordinator. So let's say that we are creating a company and we need to assign a coordinator. So there's two ways to do it. The first way I already showed you, which is checking the company coordinator box when registering a participant. Now, if we don't check that box, we can instead enter some details about our registered participant and click next. And what will happen is it will give me a list of users who match the search criteria. Now, you'll also get an option to create a new constituent, but you'll see there's a red note here. This constituent is already a contact for this organization. That note means this user is in some way, this participant is in some way affiliated with this organization or this company. So I'm going to select this user and click Next. Now, it's going to take me to the executive champion page. Before we talk about the executive champion, let's hop back to the company coordinator. The company coordinator is now populated with Mr. Wayne's biographical information. So Mr. Wayne is now configured as the company coordinator, and when he logs into his participant center, he will be able to update the company page from within his participant center. So let's go ahead now and navigate back to the executive champion page and talk briefly about this. All this is is a page where you can list details for the organization or company contact. So if you need to know who the point of contact is, if you have questions about sponsorship, participation, or other activity, or, or anything regarding this company, you can list the point of contact here. And this will let your administrators know who to call and who to get in touch with when you have questions about this company or their involvement with your event. Once I've entered the information, if I have any information, I click Next, and I can navigate then to step four, review company tree. Let's talk very briefly about company trees. So company trees allow us to create a hierarchy to associate d different subdivisions of a company. So the way I have this set up is basically Wayne Enterprises is the parent company and they might have additional regions or locations who can then be added as e optionally a local company. And so this allows you to say, Wayne Enterprises has a specific location, and we can add different departments that are associated with that location. So for instance, maybe Coca-Cola could be the Coca-Cola bottling company, or maybe it's the HR department. So there's different ways that you can leverage this. It's typically not leveraged, but if you need to have additional buckets and groupings for companies or a company organi or organization hierarchy, Here's where you can establish that and, and how you can work with those. Once we're, we're finished with this, we click Next. This brings us to an overview of the company configuration, and we can click Finish. Now, before we navigate away, there's a company coordinator center where the company coordinator can also access the company coordinator center to do things like work with the company. So once we're done, we click Finish, and it brings us back to the list of companies. So that was editing a company. Let's talk about managing a company. So when we click on manage, it brings us to an overview where we can see a list of any gifts that have been associated with the company. We can manually adjust the thermometer. 
So if we want the thermometer to show X number of dollars, we can force a thermometer adjustment. Note that it's not always uh, instantaneous. It can take upwards of 15 minutes, in some rare cases a little bit longer, for that to register over on the company page. So just be aware of that. Next, we have under related actions, the configured company page. So as we discussed previously, we can update or add a banner image, update the title, add or update the body text. If we scroll down, we can choose to modify the photograph or the company image, which is similar to the personal team. I can save my changes or click cancel to back out. So that is managing a company. So let's say that this company is also a sponsor. If we click on define sponsorship details, we can enter the name, we can enter information about the monetary sponsorship, whether, you know, how much we've requested, how much they've committed, how much they've paid to it, and then there's this, this field number six, amount pending, which will show the difference between four, fields four and five. We also have a sponsorship status where we can choose to identify the sort of status that the sponsor has. We can enter a sponsorship ask date and a projected close date, a sponsorship type, so for instance, national, regional, local, or other. We also have gift types. So if their sponsorship gift is, you know, volunteers or other, we can select that here. And Finally, we have payment type. So we have cash, check, credit, in-kind, or other. So for instance, if it's you know an in-kind gift, we simply select in-kind. Um, next, we have their sponsorship contact information where we can enter the staff contact, contact name, telephone number, email address. And if we're going to leverage a volunteer manager to work with the company, we can enter that information here. And then finally, we have a, a, a sponsoring company only, whether or not this company will be sponsorship only and will not be associated directly with teams. So uh, that means we check this box and this, you, this company cannot be associated with registrations. Once we're done establishing the sponsor information or updating the sponsor information, we click finish. So uh, let's go ahead and talk briefly about adding a new company. Let's click on add new company. And here we can search, we can start by searching our CONS360 database for existing org records. We can, uh, if they don't exist, we can simply enter a new name. We can enter the company name. And these fields are going to be identical uh, to what we've already worked with um, when we were managing uh, the, the, or editing the company. So, uh, you know, we have the basic company identifying details. We have company coordinator, executive champion, which is just our point of contact, and a review. So entering a new company is quite easy. Adding a new sponsor is even simpler than adding a new company because we identify the organization and potentially associate it with an existing org record, enter the name, enter some optional notes, sponsorship details, and click finish. So adding a new company or a new sponsor is quite easy, and that is how we can enter them. So next, let's talk about managing our unconfirmed gifts. So when we click on the unconfirmed gifts tab, we'll see a list of all the gifts that have been entered as unconfirmed. And from here, we can confirm, reject, or view or edit this. So in this case, let's say, uh, you know, a couple weeks after Mr. Wayne committed his pledge, we finally received his check in the mail, and we can confirm the gift or reject it if he said, I can't make the gift. So let's go ahead and click on confirm, and the gift has then been confirmed and is no longer listed on the unconfirmed gifts page. So working with your pledges is quite easy to do, as you can see. Next, we have the event gifts tab. This is where we can view, manage, and enter any gifts that are attributed directly to the gift. So right now we have no event gifts recorded. So what we'd want to do is under the related actions, click on record event donation. This is gonna be um, a familiar workflow. We simply locate the donor, enter the donor details or select the donor, and then we configure our gift. Now, of course, it wants me to locate the donor first and enter the gift details. Once we have entered the gift, I'm just gonna move on because uh, we're getting close to time. Once we've entered the gift, it will be listed here. So um, 
If it's an unconfirmed gift, we'll have the ability to confirm or reject the gift, and we'll also see the other basic details. So that is our event gifts tab and managing our team raiser uh, gifts or gifts that are credited not to a participant or a team, but to the event itself. Up next is the delayed self pledges. Oh, tab. Jeff, just sorry, just a quick question here, Jeff. Um, when a, a company um, when you create a company, but the, you don't have a company contact, um, is there a way to make a donation on the company's behalf without um, having a personal contact uh, information? There is. You would simply associate the gift with the organization record rather than the individual constituent record. Because when we enter a gift, Makes let's sense. go ahead and show that record event donation. I can search for an organization. In this case, let's say it's Wayne Enterprises and I can select Wayne Enterprises as the donor. Perfect, thanks. You're welcome. Um, so up next is our delayed self-pledges tab. From here, if you are leveraging the delayed self-pledges system, this is where you can manage those. You have the ability to select individual pledges and process them. You have the ability to remove the balances for selected pledges without charging them. And then, of course, you have the ability to all at once process all outstanding pledges. So that is the Delayed Self Pledges tab. There's not much to show. It's quite easy to work with if and when you are leveraging it. Up next is the Coaching Emails tab. Now, we're not going to go into details about this because we have, we'll be going into de uh, in depth about the Coaching Emails tool in a future webinar. So let's just talk very briefly about it. The coaching emails tool is a great way to communicate with your participants and donors, current and past. So if you want to reach out to just users who are registered or users who have donated on behalf of the event or a previous event, you can do that here. It's similar to working with the Luminate Online uh, email campaigns tool where you can set up a message, schedule it for delivery, create an audience segmentation, and send it out. You can very easily manage those, uh, those emails. Um, there's the message list tab. There is a delivery list tab, which will show you a list of deliveries that have been either scheduled or completed or partially configured. And then there's a report list tab where you can run reports against your coaching emails that have been sent out. Up next is the Event Managers tab. If we are leveraging Event Managers, we can create Event Managers and we can assign them. We can customize their permissions, assign different roles, and or remove them. So if we wanted to create a new Event Manager, we'd click on Create Event Manager. We'd search for them. we select them under the search results, and then we could associate their um, Permission. So let's show you very briefly what that looks like. I enter identifying information, click select. I'm presented with a list of search results. I click select. And then I can choose the permissions that I need to assign. If I want to customize the permissions before I assign them, I'll be presented with several pages of checkboxes that determine whether or not the user has permissions. I click next, click finish, and then the user has been assigned as a as or as an event manager. Now, their link to the event manager center is listed here. And the what this does is this allows the user to perform effectively administrative tasks without having access to Luminate Online. So for instance, if you have a volunteer who should be running reports or helping users register for the event or updating pages for users, they would access the, the event management center, and they can run those reports that have been configured, or they can register users or modify registrations or update pages, dependent on the permissions that they have been assigned. If we need to remove uh, an event manager, we simply click on remove, and then confirm by clicking on the blue remove event manager button, and the event manager is then removed. Uh, up next is the library tab. Here is something that I wouldn't necessarily um, encourage use of. It's not a problem to use it, but what it is is it's identical to the Luminate Online image and document library, except these are specific to this event. 
And so there's not many cases where you'll have content that you don't want accessible for future or other events. And so if you do have a scenario where you've got a set of logos or images that should not be accessible to other team raiser or events, you can upload them to the document list or the image list, depending on which sort of file type you're working with. I have not seen this heavily utilized. In fact, I can't think of a single organization that has leveraged this. In 99.99% .99 of cases, you're probably just going to want to use the generic Luminate Online image library. So that's the library tab. Up next, we have the status tab, which gives us an overview of our event. Oh, I'm, is it me or can nobody else hear Jeff anymore either? If it's just me, well, I, either way, if someone can just uh, type in here um, in the chat or the Q&A that they either can hear Jeff or cannot. Um, I think we lost Jeff. Well, um, let me see how well I do. Dun, 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 dun. All right, so the status, um, he might've gotten disconnected. I gotta love, gotta love live technology, right? Um, so yeah, the status tab was added a few years back and really has a great summary information, all the links you might need, um, shows you an overview of things. And I, I'd say just to kind of revert, kind of review the last few of these items, um, delayed self-pledge uh, is a very specific use case. Um, as Jeff mentioned, you know, if you have a required fundraising minimum, um, it's about the only time that you're going to consider using that, and even then, it's a very specific use case. I'm happy to chat with you if you're considering that. Coaching emails, we're going to have a whole session on that. Um, I think that's going to be in September. We're going to be offering that one up. Um, a lot of great information on that session, but it's just a, such a big topic that we're going to cover that separately. An event manager is really most specific to organizations that have um, remote staff or remote volunteers. Um, that manage specific events, it basically gives them a limited administrative access without getting them into the back end of Luminate. So if you have multiple events or campaigns and you want somebody else to be able to run their own reports so they're not bothering you all the time, for example, uh, asking for this information, um, you, can, you can give them event manager access, which just gives them access to specific events and then specific things within there. And it's relatively granular what you can do with that. Um, so very powerful stuff. Um, and then, uh, yeah, again, um, all of that, I think we came to the end of it. I think I answered, uh, all the questions and Jeff answered the questions I couldn't along the way. Uh, I think he believes he can still be heard. Um, <laughs> so he's moving along. Hopefully, uh, Jeff can hear me. If not, um, at least hopefully you guys that. can hear me. Oh, there he is. Yep, my phone disconnected. I have no idea what happened, so my apologies, everyone. No, I, 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 uh, I think I covered for you relatively well, and uh, just kind of put a, a wrap on it. We didn't have any other questions, and you kind of, I, I kind of finished up the, the status tab. Um, so I think we kind of covered everything um, completely. So well done. Um, if you want to just advance to one more slide and say, um, you know. If anybody has any other questions, we're happy to stay on. Definitely ask them. Um, here's one that came in. Does Team Razor have a gift acknowledgement email or mail and issue charitable receipts? Um, great question. It does have gift, gift acknowledgements in, in the um, form of autoresponders that are customizable. Um, and then also tax receiving um, um, that can be it's specifically built out for Canadian clients, but can be enabled for any client um, where you can provide um, PDF tax receipts along with that. Um, great question, John. Um, so yeah, feel free to stay on. We're happy to answer any other questions that might come in. Um, look, keep a lookout. We are recording the session um, and making it available to folks. We'll send the link out after afterwards to everybody that registered. Um, and we'll be doing coaching emails. I believe that's going to be happening in the um, September timeframe. Um, and let me know if you need anything in the meantime. We're here to help.
And thank you for joining us, Jeff. Thank you very much for going through that. You're welcome, Mark. My pleasure. And thanks, everyone, for joining us today. All right. Have a great day, everyone.